We're going on a cross country road trip on US 20. Come on, let's go. All right, everyone, today we're doing the US Highway 20 Eastbound Supercut. So I combined the eastbound portions from the western, the midwestern, and the eastern videos. And it's going to be one continuous video. We're going to be covering all 3,365 miles heading from Newport over to Boston. So let's get started with the Supercut. But first, you're watching The Dirt Pile, where I make highways content on all sorts of different topics. If you've been enjoying it, be sure to hit that like button. And if you've been really enjoying it, be sure to smash that subscribe button so you're notified on all future videos. And if you really want to help out the channel, become a member today where you get custom cool emojis, early access to future videos, along with one free extra request per month. And if you don't want to become a member, you can always just pay $3 for a intersection request in future videos. Those highways will be listed down in the description below, and I'll make sure to shout you out when that video releases. So let's get on with the highway. As you can see here, this is the entirety of US Highway 20, so we're going to be starting from Newport, Oregon, and heading all the way over to Boston, Massachusetts. So with that, we're going to be talking about eastbound US 20. So we actually begin here in Newport, Oregon at a junction with US Highway 101. And right at this junction here, we have a mileage sign for US 20 and US 101. And for US 20, Corvallis is on the bottom line at 53 miles away. And I think that is a good choice. Also, this is very helpful to travelers. Oregon, this is a wonderful job by you. And once we get on the US 20 itself, we have a mention of Boston, Massachusetts, which is 3,365 miles away. I wonder how many times this sign has been stolen here, if it's ever been stolen. And once we leave Newport, we actually get some pretty woodsy area before we hit Corvallis. And here in Corvallis, we're now meeting Oregon Highway 99W. Here we're signed for downtown Corvallis. Here, in down, here is downtown Corvallis. Now US 20 is splitting off from Oregon Highway 34 and we're now signed east for Albany. Here in Albany we're now meeting Oregon Highway 99E and US 20 here is now signed east for Lebanon. Here in Albany still we're now meeting Interstate 5. Interstate 5 is signed north for Salem and south for Eugene and Roseburg. Why is Roseburg on there? Eugene's just fine. And here in Lebanon, where US 20 is now signed east for Sweet Home, which is a town in the Oregon Mountains. And here's some beautiful scenery here in the mountains. And here's some more scenery as we head towards Bend. And this is out in the middle of nowhere here in the mountains, and we just get a random pull through for US 20 East with no control city. I wonder what US 20 is signed here for. Ah, we get Bend on the bottom line at 47 miles away. Now here's, uh, we're splitting off from one Oregon Highway and we're now signed for Bend and Burns. So yay. And here's what they call the Three Sister Mountains and this is actually the title screen of the video. So that's pretty cool. And here in Bend, we're now meeting US Highway 97 where 20 and 97 business have a currency as we head through the city. And here in Bend, we have the last remaining blockbuster in the entire country. And if you don't know what a blockbuster is, I recommend asking your parents because blockbuster was the, kind of the Netflix before Netflix. And once we leave the Bend area, we actually now go through some pretty boring scenery here. And now we're meeting US Highway 395, and 395 and US 20 are concurrent as we head towards Burns and John Day. And guess what US 395 is, the, hey I know this highway. So US 395 is 1,305 miles long, it travels roughly from Southern California all the way up to the Canada border, through the states of California, Oregon, and Washington. It is one of the two child routes of US-95, sadly it does not meet its parent, but it does meet US-195, which I believe meets US-95. And it lies between US-95 and US-97, 
And sadly, there cannot be a US 95 and a half, so I'm guessing 395 was chosen. Also, US 395 goes through some beautiful scenery and some major intersections and currencies on the highway include US 6, US 20, US 50, the highest numbered US highway, US 730, Interstates 15, 80, 84, 82, and Interstate 90. So that's a little bit about US 395, and let's get back to US Highway 20. Here is Downtown Burns. And now US 395 is splitting off from US Highway 20, as US 20 is now heading towards Ontario. In fact, we get Ontario on the bottom line at 128 miles away. And this is one in one of the small cities here in Eastern Oregon, and US-26 is now joining US-20, and they have a currency as we head towards East, or Ontario. And on our way to Ontario, we actually passed by right the sign called the Veil or Bus Sign. Apparently this was mentioned as an attraction on Google Maps, I don't know why. And here in the Ontario area, we're now meeting Oregon Highway 201, and US 20 and 26 are going to be heading straight here. And now we're entering into the state of Idaho, and we have a mileage sign directly at the state line. We have Boise on the bottom line at 47 miles away. Yay, Idaho! Now we're being US Highway 95, and US 95, 20, and 26 all have a concurrency with each other. And this is where US-95 splits off from US-20 and 26, as US-20 and 26 head east towards Boise. Here are meaning the Western Interstate 84, and 84 and 30 and 20 and 26 all have a concurrency with each other as we head towards Boise. And here in Boise, US-20 and 26 is splitting off from Interstate 84 and US Highway 30, and we just get the Kentucky treatment of Franklin Road. And I kind of agree with that because I don't know what you would sign here because US 20 and 26 later on reunite with Interstate 84 on the other side of town. So this is actually a pretty good use of the Kentucky treatment here. And here are in merging into Interstate 184 in the Boise area. And this is some beautiful scenery here in Boise. And here's downtown Boise, suddenly I cannot find a picture of the Idaho State Capitol. But this looks like an actual cool place that I want to visit one day. And here we're meeting Interstate 84 once again. And we're now signing East 4 Mountain Home. That's where US 20 splits off from 26 and 30 in Interstate 84. Uh, West 84 gets Nampa. Hmm? No, that should be Boise and Portland, not Nampa. And here in Mount Home, US 20 is splitting off from Interstates 84, 26, or Interstate 84, US 26, and US 30 for Mount Home and Fairfield. But our next mileage time, we get Sun Valley on the bottom line, 111 miles away. Huh? Why was Sun Valley signed on that exit sign? Sun. Well, let me tell you something. Sun Valley is not on US Highway 20. It is on one of the random Idaho state routes. So they're favoring a state route over US 20 here. Idaho, what are you doing? That should be Fairfield on that bottom line. We don't need Sun Valley here. If you want to sign Sun Valley, that should be at the Idaho 75 exit, not here. And here are me, Idaho 75, and we have a nice rest stop here. So that's pretty cool. And Sun Valley is mentioned for Idaho 75, and we're going to sign east for Idaho Falls. Which is a good choice because we're going to be reuniting with US 26, and we're also going to be meeting US 93. Here are me, US 20, or US 26, and US 93. Here's where US 26 splits off from US Highway 20, and US 20 is now still heading towards Idaho Falls. While US 26 is heading towards Blackfoot and Pocatello. Here in Idaho Falls, we're now meeting Interstate 15, and we're going to have a one mile concurrency with the interstate. And we're signed north for Butte and West Yellowstone. Here is US 20 splitting off from Interstate 15, and we're now signed east for Rexburg and West Yellowstone. So, yay! The reason West Yellowstone is on there is because the western entrance is on US 20. 
And West Yellowstone still remains our bottom line control city here in Rexburg. And here are entering in the state of Montana, so that looks actually very beautiful here. Here in one of these small towns in Montana before entering into Yellowstone National Park, we're meeting US 191 and 287 and 191, 287 and US 20 all have a concurrency as we head towards Yellowstone National Park. And sadly, this is where our journey for very far western US 20 ends because as you continue on this road here, you're going to be entering into Yellowstone National Park. And I don't want to be navigating through the entire thing here in Yellowstone on US 20 because I've heard it's a mess, so we're going to just be jumping ahead to the eastern entrance where US 20 continues there. On the other side of Yellowstone National Park, we now have a spawning of US-14 and US-16, and US-20, 14, and 16 all have a concurrency here. And this is where US-14 splits off from US-16 and US-20, and we're signed east for Basin and Woodland, while US-14 is signed for Shell and Sheridan. And here is US-20 splitting off from US-16, as US-16 is signed east for Buffalo, Wyoming, well, US-20 is signed for Thermopolis. And here in Thermopolis, US-20 is now signed for Shoshone. And now we're reuniting with US Highway 26, and US-26 and 20 have a concurrency as we head towards Casper, which is a great choice. And here in Casper, we're now meeting Interstate 25, and we're going to be joining with Interstate 25 South, signed for Casper and Cheyenne. And here is where US 20 and 26 and 87 all split off from Interstate 25 here in Ch Casper. And 25 is signed south for Cheyenne. And this is at the other end of Casper. We're now reuniting with U Interstate 25. And we're signed for Douglas. What happened to Cheyenne? Where's Cheyenne? Give me my Cheyenne back, Wyoming. Why? And here is where US-20 splits off from US-26, 87, and Interstate 25, and we're now signed east for Lusk. Here are main US-85 here in Lusk, and we're now signed for Chadron and Newcastle. And this is where US-20 splits off from US-85 and 18, and we're now signed east for Chadron. And Chadron is actually in Nebraska, not Wyoming, so yay. And shortly later, we're now entering into the state of Nebraska, and we're going to be ending the US-20 Western section here. So we begin where we left off last week at the Wyoming and Nebraska line, where Nebraska is welcoming us, and it's telling us that it's home of Arbor Day. Like, who celebrates Arbor Day? In our first mileage time in Nebraska, we get Harrison. What happened to Chad Run? Wyoming was signing Chadron, so Nebraska, you should keep up with it, not sign Harrison. No one even knows what Harrison, Nebraska is. But here in Harrison, we actually now get Chadron at 51 miles away, so yay. And we also get a mention of Casper from 137 miles away. And on our way to Chadron, we actually meet US 385, and 385 and US 20 have a concurrency as we head through the town. And here's where US 385 splits off from US 20 here in Chadron. In our next mileage time, we get Gordon on the bottom line at 47 miles away. Honestly, that's a good choice because that's the next major town we'll be going through. And plus, if you want to sign Valentine, Valentine's too far away from here. For our next mileage time, we get Valentine on the bottom line at 90 miles away because that's a great choice, and that's where we meet US 83. And here in Valentine, we're meeting US 83, and US 83 and US 20 have a concurrency with each other. And this is where US 83 splits off from US 20, and now US 20 is heading towards O'Neill. But instead of O'Neill on the bottom line, we get Ainsworth on our next mileage line at 40 miles away. Uh, I'd rather see O'Neill on there. But our next mileage line, we get O'Neill on the bottom line at 65 miles away, which is a great choice because that's where we meet US 281 and US 275. But on our way to O'Neill, we actually meet US 183. 
and this is where US 183 splits off from US Highway 20. And now in O'Neill, we're meeting US Highway 281 and 281, and US 20 have a concurrency with each other. And this is where US 281 splits off from US 20, and this is actually the start of US 275. So now from here to where US 275 splits from US 20, they have a concurrency with each other. Also, this town is going to have really good luck, or must be really Irish because of this uh, clover leaf right here in the in the middle of the intersection. On our next mileage time, we get Sioux City on the bottom line, 124 miles away. Wow, Nebraska is really good at signing U.S. Highway 20, so they get a win here in my book. And this is where US 275 splits off from US Highway 20, and US 20 is continuing towards Sioux City. In fact, Sioux City is still on our bottom line at 112 miles away. And just outside of Sioux City, we're meeting US Highway 81. And this here is in Sioux City, where we're going to be joining with Interstate 129, and we're going to be on Interstate 129 and US Highway 75 for a short concurrency. And now we're meeting Interstate 29 as we enter into the state of Iowa, so yay. And this is what North Interstate 29 is signed for in Sioux City, and it's signed for downtown, while we're signed now for Fort Dodge and Lamar's. Lamar's is on US 75, while we're signed for Fort Dodge. In fact, we get Fort Dodge on our next mileage time at the bottom line at 117 miles away. That must be a pretty long distance. On our way to Fort Dodge, we're meeting US Highway 59, and US 59 and US 20 have a concurrency. And this is where US 59 splits off from US Highway 20 as we're continuing east towards Fort Dodge. Now we're meeting US Highway 71, and we've seen US 71 before. In fact, if you're a fan of the Kansas City Swifties, you would probably watch this video because I did it to celebrate their Super Bowl win. And if you want to check out that video and you're not a Kansas City fan, you can still check it out right up here. And this is where US 71 splits off from US 20 and it signs up for Sac City and Carroll. I believe Carroll is on there because that's where we meet US 30. And we finally get to Fort Dodge where we meet US Highway 169 which is signed for Fort Dodge. And on US 169 itself, we're now signed east for Waterloo, which is still another 100 miles away from here. And here are me, US Highway 69 at exit 149. And now we're meeting Interstate 35, which is signed south for Des Moines, which is a great choice. And north for Mason City? Huh? I've never even heard of Mason City, Iowa, before I did research on this video. Apparently that's where Interstate 35 meets US 18. But for some reason, it's just a one-off here, and at every other interchange north of here, 35 is signed for Minneapolis. So why not sign it here too, Iowa? I don't know. Now we're meeting US Highway 65. And now we're meeting US Highway 63 on the outskirts of Waterloo. And here in Waterloo, we're actually meeting US Highway 218, and we're now going to have a small concurrency with Interstate 380. And guess what Interstate 380 is? The... Hey, I know this highway. Interstate 380 here in Iowa is one of the three 380 spurs along Interstate 80 in its entire route. The other two being in California and Pennsylvania. Interstate 380 here in Iowa connects Interstate 80 from Iowa City all the way up to the city of Waterloo, where it dead ends into US 218. Some major intersections on Interstate 380 include US 20, US 30, US 50, 151, US 218, and Interstate 80 itself. Also, Extreme Geography made a Interstate 380 video, so if you'd like to check that out and more on Interstate 380, I recommend checking it out up here. That's a little about 380, and let's get back onto US 20. Here we're splitting off from Interstate 380 as it's signed south for Cedar Rapids, and we're now signed east for Dubuque, which is a great choice. 
And what comes around goes around. I remember doing the US 52 series like all like seven months ago. And we're finally doing US Highway 20 now. So if you want to check out the US 52 series, I recommend checking it out up here in the top right corner. And here passed by the Iowa Farm Toy Museum once again. And this is where US 52 splits off from US 20 and it's signed south of Bellevue and Asbury. And now we're in Dubuque and US 20 just gets signed east for Illinois. Why not Rockford instead of just Illinois? After crossing over the Mississippi River, we're now entering into the state of Illinois. Illinois. What happened to the O? In here, still in East Dubuque, we're actually now signed East for Rockford, which is the great choice. But I dot likes the I dot, and now we're signed for Galena. Why? What happened to Rockford? And we also passed by Thunder Bay Falls, which apparently is private. Then why is it signed on Google Maps? Are you wanting everyone to come over here? Then don't sign if you wanted it to be private. And here in Rockford, we're now going to be signed East for Chicago, which is a great choice because we're going to be meeting Interstate 39 and Interstate 90. And here is the meeting with Interstate 39, and we're going to be joining with Interstate 39 North and US 51 North. And we also get a 2I90 for Wisconsin and Chicago. Here is where US Highway 20 splits off from Interstate 39. Here in Bellevue Day, we have a directional sign, and we're signed east for Marengo. Huh? I've never heard of Marengo, Illinois. So apparently, Illinois does not want you to take US-20 to Chicago, because US-20 is the free route, and they want you to stay on the toll road. And apparently so, because apparently there is no mention of Chicago on this sign here. Instead, we get Hampshire and Huntley for the two state highways that we're going to meet. No, that should be Elgin in Chicago, Illinois, not Hampshire and Huntley. What are you doing here? This is the worst sign ever. And to confuse it even more, we get Illinois in Illinois. What? We're in Illinois. This is. I know this is supposed to be for the state routes, but this can be confusing to those who want to take this exit. What are you doing here, Illinois? But our next mile of time, we get Chicago on the bottom line at 48 miles away, which is a great choice. And Elgin here, too. Where were they on the sign we saw just a moment ago? Now we're entering into the Chicagoland area, where we meet Illinois Highway 59. It's kind of like the barrier between Chicago and not Chicago, at least in my opinion. And now we're meeting Illinois 390, or future Interstate 390. Now we're meeting Interstate 290 and Interstate 355, which is signed for Chicago and Rockford, and for Joliet, which are great choices for a three-digit interstate. And now we're meeting Interstate 290 and 290 and US 20 and have a short concurrency with each other. Floating off from the Eisenhower Expressway as US 20 now becomes North Avenue and Lake Street. And now we're meeting the US-12 and US-45, where we form the famous 12-20-45 concurrency in Chicago. And now we're meeting the Eisenhower once again, where it's just get east and west and no control cities. Now we're meeting US Highway 34, which actually takes you over to the Brookfield and Brookfield Zoo, which I've actually been to. Now we're meeting old US Highway 66. And now we're meeting Interstate 55 in the snow scenery here, and Interstate 55 is signed south for St. Louis. And I checked ahead, and Interstate 55 is signed north for Chicago, which are, again is a good choice. And now we're meeting the Tri-State Tollway once again, along with Archer Avenue, and I've actually been on Archer Avenue because Illinois 171 actually takes you all the way into the town of Lamont, Illinois. So yay! We're now on LaGrange Road. Now here's where US 12 and 20 splits off from US 45 as we head now east towards US 41. Here we're meeting the Tri-State Tollway once again and it's signed south for Indiana. And now we're joining 
Lakeshore Drive and US 41, 12, and 20 have a concurrency as we head out of the city. We are entering into Indiana and we now meet Interstate 80, 90, and 94. And this is where US 41 splits off from US 12 and 20. Here's where US 12 splits off from US 20 for the first time and certainly not for the last. Why, hello there, US 12. Where did you come from? And now we're meeting Interstate 65, which is signed south for Indianapolis. And I've actually been on this part of Interstate 65. I've been on Interstate 65 basically from here all the way down to exit 69 in Alabama. Yes, I've been on the majority of Interstate 65. And this is where US-12 truly leaves US-20 as US-12 heads east towards Detroit. Before we leave now, US-12, we have a directional sign. We're signing east for Portage. No, that should be South Bend or Michigan City, not Portage. We're already in Portage basically here. Now we're meeting Interstate 94, which gets east for Detroit and west for Chicago. But sadly, on Interstate 94 itself, we're just signing east for Porter. Again, what about Michigan City or South Bend? We're already in Porter. And Burns Harbor, so I've never heard of these places. Now we're meeting US Highway 421, and this is actually the northern terminus of the highway. And we're actually going to be coming back to this highway soon, in a couple of weeks. And now we're meeting US Highway 35, which is signed south for LaPorte, and we're finally signed south east for South Bend. Here in South Bend, we're going to be joining with US Highway 31, and US 20 and 31 is signed east for Plymouth. And this is where US 20 splits off from US Highway 31, and it's signed south for Plymouth and Indianapolis. Now we're signed east for Elkhart, which is a good choice, because that's where we meet the northern terminus of US 33. In fact, here is the northern terminus of US-33, and it's signed for Elk Elkhart and Goshen. And on US-33 itself, US-20 is now signed east for Angolia, which is a great choice because that's where we meet Interstate 69. I know Angolia is not a big city, but it's still where we meet Interstate 69. Now we're, split, now we're meeting Interstate 69 here in Angolia, and Interstate 69 is signed for Fort Wayne and Lansing, which are great choices. As we're leaving Angolia, we have another mileage sign, and we have Toledo on the bottom line at 68 miles away, which is a great choice by Indiana. But sadly, they're downgrading here and signing Columbia over Toledo here. And guess what Columbia, Ohio is? an unincorporated community. It's not even showing up on the map. So why is Indiana signing it here and over Toledo? I don't understand their choices. Man, Indiana's actually getting some bad rap. Now here training. at the Ohio and Indiana state line where we just get an Ohio state line sign and no welcome to Ohio sign. That's not cool. And now we're seeing Columbia, Ohio, which was the town that Indiana decided to sign US-20 East for at the Indiana 1 Junction. And our first mileage sign here in Ohio, we get Fayette on the bottom line at 23 miles away. What happened to Toledo? As we saw in our previous episode, we're leaving Angolia, we have another mileage sign and we have Toledo on the bottom line at 68 miles away, which is a great choice by Indiana. So uh, Indiana was signing Toledo on US-20, so why not Ohio? Come on, Ohio. Put Toledo back on that sign. It's 57 miles away now. And our first junction in Ohio is US-127. And US-127 and US-20 have a short concurrency with each other. Here's where US-127 splits off from US-20, as US-127 is heading north towards Jackson, Michigan. Now Here at the Ohio 108 Junction, we're now signed east for a Y sign. That's on Ohio 108 here. We still want Toledo. Where's Toledo, Ohio? Apparently it does not exist out here. But once Ohio 108 splits off from us, we finally get signed for Toledo, which is now only 35 miles away. Where was that at the beginning of the state? In our next mileage sign, we get Toledo on the bottom line at 27 miles away. And we also get a mention of Interstate 475 and US-23, so that's cool. 
Here are in the Toledo area, we're meeting Interstate 475 and US Highway 23. And we're just signed east for Central Avenue because we're about to enter into down or the downtownish area, Toledo. Now we're meeting US Highway 24 and Ohio 25 in the Toledo area. And on the other side of town, we're meeting Interstate 25 and US 23 South is now going to be joining with us. And since we're near Toledo, 75 gets signed north for Toledo, which is a good choice, and south for Dayton, which are great choices. Our next mileage time, we get Fremont on the bottom line at 27 miles away. Alright, that's a pretty sizable town. That's where you also meet US 6. And here's where US 23 splits off from US 20. And now we're in Fremont and we meet US Highway 6. And US 20 and US 6 are actually a freeway around the city of Fremont. And this is where US 6 splits off from US 20, and we're now signed East 4 Norwalk, which is another good choice, because that's a huge town. Here in Norwalk, we're meeting US Highway 250, and on US 250, US 20 is now signed East 4 Cleveland, which is awesome! Here is, we are passing under the Ohio Turnpike, which we have no access to. And we also have no access to Interstate 90 here in the Toledo area. So what's the deal with all these major U.S. highways not getting access to XO interstates in, in Ohio? They need to change that. Now we're meeting U.S. 6. And U.S. 6 and U.S. 20 have a concurrency with each other as we head towards downtown Cleveland. You are entering into downtown Cleveland and U.S. or Ohio 2 is splitting off from us to head towards Interstate 90. And here is the Cleveland Public Square here in downtown Cleveland. Here is downtown Cleveland and we also get a, sh a sign telling us that if we follow US 20, it will take us over to Interstate 71 and 77. Now we're meeting US Highway 322 here in Cleveland and US 20 and 322 literally have a short concurrency because this is where US 322 splits off from US 20 to head towards Pennsylvania. Now we're splitting off from US Highway 6, and US 6 is now heading towards Pennsylvania 2, but we're heading towards Erie now. Now we're meeting Interstate 90 finally, and we in it signed East for Erie and Columbus. The reason Columbus is there is because of Interstate 271, so that's great choices by Ohio. And this is on Ohio Route 2, and we're now signed East for Estabula. Which is a good choice because I bet if people wanted to get from Cleveland to Erie, they would have probably stayed on Interstate 90. Because US 20 is not the fastest way to Erie from here, so Astabula. that's a good choice. Now we're meeting Ohio 11 here in Astabula. And we're now entering into the state of Pennsylvania. Uh oh, are we gonna need the sign? E and they actually mentioned Erie here on US 20. Wow! That's pretty good by Pennsylvania. Hmm. Now we're also meeting US Highway 6 in, and it looks like they tried just slapping on the end. There's plenty of room to move that 6 over to have 6 in instead of just slapping it on there. Now we get a mileage sign here in Pennsylvania, and they're signing Erie on the bottom line. Wow, that's pretty cool! Not some small town or suburb of Erie. Here I'm meeting Pennsylvania Highway 18, I believe the longest state highway here in Pennsylvania. Now I'm meeting Interstate 79, which gets signed south for Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh! That's cool! Not some small random town like Interstate 80 gets signed. They signed Pittsburgh here! Here in, down, or here in the Erie area, I mean U.S. Highway 19, which is cool, and it's signed for Meadville, so that's awesome. Here's a cool overview of the rest of Erie. And now our next mile time, we get Buffalo? They're signing Buffalo here in Pennsylvania? Wow, you're blowing me away here on U.S. 20. And now on Interstate 99, he's also signed East for Buffalo. That's awesome! And we're now entering into the state of New York, or the state that I like to call the town hopping state. Because there is really nothing important between Buffalo and Albany, so they just sign like every 
ton they can. I don't know why. In our first mileage sign in New York, we get Buffalo on the bottom line still at 68 miles away. Now we're meeting Interstate 90 once again, and we have no control cities for either of the highways. And we're now entering into the Buffalo area where we meet US Highway 62, and man I remember doing that US 62 video like it was yesterday. Now we're getting to view it on US 20. And sadly here we have no direct access to US Highway 219. In order to get to US 219 you have to take US 20 alternate. And as we're still in the Buffalo area, we actually pass right by the Buffalo Bills Stadium or Highmark Stadium. That's pretty cool. And now we're reuniting with US 20 alternate and we're now signed east for Avon, so okay. Here are me Interstate 390 here in Avon and we have no control cities here on US 20 itself. But on 390, US 20 is now signed east for Lima. Okay. And this is here in Lima, we get Canana de Guatagua. I don't know how to pronounce that town, but now it's 24 miles away. And here in Canana de Guatagua, we're now signed east for Geneva, which is 16 miles away. Here in Geneva, now we're signed for Skinny Atlases. And I just skipped ahead because basically that's what New York does. They just keep signing major towns along US Highway 20. So I just skipped ahead to this air shield in the middle of nowhere, New York. And our next mileage sign here in the middle of nowhere, New York, we get Albany on the bottom line at 90 miles away. Here are me and US Highway 11 in the middle of nowhere. And US 11 actually takes you north to Syracuse. And I skipped all the way ahead to New York Highway 7 and Interstate 88. Here's the actual meeting with Interstate 88, and 88 is signed east for Albany, which is good. Now we're entering into downtown Albany. And here in downtown Albany, we actually pass right by the New York State Museum. So I'd like to check that place out one day because it looks huge. Now I mean US Highway 9 here in Albany and US 9 and 20 have a concurrency with each other as we head east out of town. Here are crossing over the Hudson River in Albany. And now we're signed east for Greenbush, huh? I believe that's a suburb of Albany. Why are we signed for that? We should be signed for Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Here is US Highway 4. And guess what US Highway 4 is, the hey I know this highway. US 4 is only 253 miles long and it is a new lift route as it travels from US 20 and US 9 in New York and travels through the states of Vermont and New Hampshire ending at Interstate 95. It has no children route and it, it is, like I said, a new England route. Some major intersections and concurrencies along US 4 include US 3, US 5, US 7, US 9, US 20, and US 202. Along with the interstates of 89, 90, 93, 95, and Interstate 393. So that's a little bit about this New England route of US Highway 4. And let's get back to US 20. And after leaving US 4, we're now meeting Interstate 90, and here we get no control cities for Interstate 90. And now we're splitting off from US Highway 9, and US 9 is signed south for Hudson, while we're signed for Pittsfield, which is a great choice. Now we're entering into the state of Massachusetts, and Massachusetts is welcoming us on this plain green sign. They could do better than that. Now we're meeting US Highway 7 here in Pittsfield, and we're going to be joining with US 7 south for the Massachusetts Pike. And this is where US 20 splits off from US 7, as now we're signed east for Lee. Now we're meeting the Mass Pike, and it's signed east for Boston and west for Albany. Let's see what we're signed for on the Mass Pike. And we're just signed east for 2 Route 102. No, that should be Westfield, because that's the next major town we're going to be hitting. And we're also going to be meeting US 202 there. Signed Westfield. Here in Westfield, we're meeting with US-202, and US-202 and US-20 have a concurrency with each other, as we're now signed east for Springfield. 
Here is where US-20 splits off from uh, US-202, and we're now signed for West Springfield and Springfield. Now we're meeting US-5 here in Springfield, and we're going to cross the river and head towards Interstate 91 in Springfield proper. Here are meeting Interstate 91, and we're going to be joining with Interstate 91 South. And then after, directly after that, we're going to be hopping onto Interstate 291. In fact, here we are hopping onto Interstate 291, and we're signed for Boston, so that's cool. And, and we're splitting off from Interstate 291, and we're signing these for Indian Orchard. What? No, that's a, that's a neighborhood of Springfield. That should be Palmer and Sturbridge, not Indian Orchard. Pa both Palmer and Sturbridge are actual towns, not neighborhoods. Also, Sturbridge is where I meet Interstate 84, and Palmer's a big city of its own. Sign those two towns! Now we're here in Sturbridge, we're meeting with Interstate 84, and it's signed west for Hartford, where Interstate 84 East deads into Interstate 90. Now we're meeting Interstate 395 and Interstate 290, which is one of the same highway, it's just that at US 20 they changed numbers for some bizarre reason. And 290 is signed east for Wooster, while 395 is signed south for Norwich. Here I'm meeting Interstate 495 on the outskirts of Boston, and it's signed north for Lowell and south for Cape Cod. Yay. And now I'm meeting Interstate 95, and 95 is signed north for Portsmouth and south for Providence. And we're now signed east for Waltham. After traveling through all the small suburbs and stuff in Boston, we now finally end here in downtown, and we have a nice NUS 20 shield. So we now have covered all 3,365 miles of US Highway 20. Phew, so we finally completed all 3,365 miles. So we're gonna move on to the way it should be on US 20 eastbound. So these are all the places that I think it should be on US 20 eastbound the entire route. First I do Corvallis, then Lebanon, then Bend, then Burns, then Ontario slash Nisa. Because Ontario is the bigger city, but US 20 goes through NYSA. Then after that, I'd definitely do Boise, then Mountain Home, then Idaho Falls, then Yellowstone National Park, then Cody, Portland, Thermopolis, and then dual sign Shoshone and Casper. And then after going through Shoshone, just Casper, then Douglas, then Lusk, then Chadron, then Gordon, then Valentine, then O'Neill, then Sioux City, then Fort Dodge, then Waterloo, Dubuque. Rockford, Belvere Day, Elgin, Chicago, Gary, Michigan City, South Bend, Elkhart, Angolia, Toledo, Fremont slash Norwalk, and after passing through both those towns, Cleveland, then Stabula, Erie, Fredonia, Buffalo, Avona, Canada, Gua, Auburn, Syracuse, Mooresville, and then since there's nothing between Mooresville and Albany, I'll just do I-88, and after Albany, Pittsfield, Westfield, Sturbridge, Wooster, Marlboro, Waltham, and then finally Boston. Thank y'all so much for watching this supercut of US Highway 20 Eastbound. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making this series. So these are my plans for what I have next. Next week I'm going to be releasing the Westbound supercut, and then after that I'm going to be doing the St. Louis Beltway for the UFL season, and then after that I'm going to be doing US Highway 421. And then finally, after 421, I'm going to be doing all of the child rock of Interstate 64 in the Norfolk area. So that'll be fun. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next week as we head back towards Newport.